News 4 at 5 is coming up. Murder defendant John Kalani Lincoln takes the stand in his own defense. A few state senators call for cuts in legislative spending. Ceremonies at the Arizona Memorial commemorate the 51st anniversary of the Pearl Harbor bombing. Hey, you think it's windy now? Just wait. It's going to get a little windier. Not today, not tomorrow, but Wednesday. We'll have the details in the forecast in a few minutes. Coming up in sports, in case you missed it, Saturday night, the bench-clearing brawl between the Rainbows and Pittsburgh. We'll look at some examples of misleading food labels. And there is a possible problem with some Campbell's Soups products. We'll tell you which one. New Sport 5 is up next. For Christmas, Jewel Box has plucked pearls from the oceans of the Orient. Unearth stunning sapphires from Sri Lanka. Discovered exquisite emeralds in Zaire. Brought back rare amethyst from Brazil. Magnificent jewelry from the exotic corners of the world. Make this Christmas incomparably romantic. Come to Jewel Box. For holiday beauty beautifully presented, consider Shiseido's Christmas gift set at Liberty House. Our deluxe organizer holds the eye care collection. The accessory case reveals rich revitalizing cream. And the keepsake box includes her skincare favorites. Feminite Dubois is Shiseido's newest fragrance. And this fan is your gift with your $35 purchase. The art of gift giving refined by Shiseido. At Liberty House, a Christmas tradition in Hawaii. KITV4 Island Television. Next on Hawaii's News. You were acquitted of shooting Harry and Savage, is that correct? Yes, I was. You were acquitted of the murder of David Blue, is that correct? Yes, I was. What is your position with respect to this charge? I'm not guilty. Live, News 4 at 5, with Gary Sprinkle and Pamela Young. Good evening and thank you for joining us. That was defendant John Kalani Lincoln, who took the witness stand in his own murder trial today. Lincoln is charged in connection with a 1978 murder on Maui. As News 4's Cedric Yamanaka reports, Lincoln said he never hired admitted hitman Anthony Kekona to kill anyone. John Kalani Lincoln's third murder trial hinges upon the question, who will the jury believe? Lincoln, who says he has nothing to do with murder, did you hire Anthony Kekona to kill Paul Werber? I did not. Or admitted hitman Anthony Kekona, who says in 1978 he shot three people on Maui, killing two, under a $10,000 contract by Lincoln. Did you ever pay Anthony Kekona any money to kill Paul Werber, David Blue, or Harriet Savage? I did not. Under questioning by his attorney Eric Seitz, Lincoln said he met Kekona at Habilitat in the late 70s, that at one point they were like brothers. We're really close. We're really close. On cross-examination, the state asked Lincoln why Kekona would say he was hired by Lincoln to kill if he wasn't. I try to understand that he's trying to get out of prison. In an agreement with the state, Kekona can leave the federal prison in Marion, Illinois, to serve his life term in Maui in exchange for his testimony against Lincoln. On the stand, Lincoln also called Lieutenant Gary Danley a liar. Danley's the lead detective in the case who said back in 1978, Lincoln apologized to him for the shooting of Harriet Savage. Did you ever make that statement? No, no, I did not. Attorneys are scheduled to give their closing arguments in the case tomorrow morning. That means the fate of John Kalani Lincoln could be in the hands of a circuit court jury by this time tomorrow. Cedric Amanaka, News 4 at Circuit Court. And a circuit court judge has sentenced Manuel Lucero to 10 years in prison for last year's hit-and-run death of a Honolulu police officer, Randall Young. In October, Lucero pleaded no contest to charges of first-degree negligent homicide and failure to render aid. On August 28, 1991, motorcycle officer Randall Young was writing a ticket to another driver on the Poly Highway when he was struck by a car driven by Lucero. Prosecutors say Lucero was drunk. And today, Circuit Judge Paula Nakayama sentenced Lucero to 10 years in prison. In court, Lucero said he is sorry for his actions and apologized to the family of Officer Young. Lucero will also have to pay a $100 fine. 
Police have charged two window washers with trespassing in yesterday's incident at the waterfront towers. That's where their friend fell 22 floors to his death. The medical examiner has not yet identified the 32-year-old man who died. He was also a window washer. Police say he and a friend had been drinking at about 1.30, then decided to repel from the top of the building on lines used by window washers. The victim's line got tangled and he fell. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Fire rescue crews had to help the other man down. He and another friend who stayed on the ground were arrested and charged with trespassing. They've since been released on $50,000 bail. A group of state Senate Democrats say that the public does not know enough about what goes on at the state legislature. I think too many times in the past, uh, the operations of the Senate along with its procedures have been really an unsolved mystery. And so uh, people are guessing and uh, we've obscured uh, more than attempted to reveal. Norman Mizuguchi leads a group of nine senators who lost to Senator James Aki in the leadership battle. Today, Mizuguchi's group proposed a number of changes to Senate rules that would force more public decision making, set up a code of ethical conduct, and allow changes to legislation on the Senate floor. This is uh, an opportunity to uh, create uh, more openness and greater accessibility uh, for all members to participate fully in the passage of legislation. Uh, in the Senate. Senate President Aki has not yet responded to the proposed reforms. Meanwhile, Senate Republican leader Mary George says she isn't sure that the dissident proposals will lead to much. George has seen Democrats divided before and says it usually leads to less openness than there was before. The state may face an expensive catch-22. The federal government says the state took too much money from the airport budget to pay for administrative costs. The Federal Aviation Administration says more than $30 million should be refunded from the state treasury into the airport's budget. But state law requires the administrative payment, and the state finance director says the refund can't be made without violating the law. Despite the sums involved, officials say they don't consider this a major problem. The Big Island now has a new mayor, county council, and prosecuting attorney. The noontime swearing-in ceremony was held in Hilo's Civic Auditorium. Stephen Yamashiro takes over as mayor, this after having defeated fellow Democrat Lorena Noe in the primary. He went on to a relatively easy general election victory. But with an ailing agriculture industry and tourism down, that election may be the last easy task for Yamashiro. We are now also to make sure that uh, we look at our governmental operations so that we're working as smart as we can, as efficiently as we can, so we can meet the needs that are being created by some of the economic problems that our island's facing now. Yamashiro goes into office with a friendly council. He's considered pro-business and is thought to have a solid five to four majority for his policies. One person who may be on the losing end of this is Keiko Bronk Abramson. She is the first Green Party candidate to be elected in Hawaii. Officials have announced that a contingent of Kaneohe Marines will be heading for Somalia. Eight officers and 57 Marines stationed at Kaneohe Marine Corps Air Station will leave Wednesday for Camp Pendleton in California. And from there, they'll join other Marine units en route to Somalia for Operation Restore Hope. The day of infamy, 51 years ago today, plunged the United States into World War II. Services were held at the USS Arizona Memorial, the final resting place of more than 1,100 men and women who lost their lives the day of the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor.
There are very few good things we can say about Hurricane Iniki, but today Park Service officials at the Arizona Memorial were delivered a surprise that may have turned up because of Hawaii's worst hurricane. This is believed to be part of a Japanese fighter plane. It was delivered to park officials by a Waipahu man who found it churned up in the sand the day after Iniki. Officials think it might be part of a Japanese plane shot down off Barber's Point December 7th, 41. It appears to be part of the plane's engine. Pat Beter told park historian Daniel Martinez he found it sticking out of the sand when he was fishing at Barber's Point. The piece will be sent to the Smithsonian Museum in Washington for identification. Then Pat Beter says he'll donate it to either the Arizona Memorial or Hawaii's Air Space Museum. Yeah, you know, a lot of my diver friends are saying they're finding all sorts of stuff uh, as a result of that surge that came in and kicked up all that sand. Everything churned up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've got much more for you in the way of local and national news. Dick Allgaier joins us next with a health report. He'll tell us about misleading food labels. And Dan Cook will be here. Uh, getting sick and tired of this windy weather? Uh-oh. He says it's not going away. President-elect Clinton makes his second trip to Washington. He's expected to have his economic team in place by the end of the week. That's coming up on World News Tonight. On News 4 at 6, a federal sting operation breaks up a potential multi-million dollar credit card scam in the islands. And Robert Kikaula is here at 620. He'll have surfing from sunset. And the football rainbows get no respect in the polls. Hmm. And when News 4 at 5 continues, we will have the nightly health report. What are you guys doing? Didn't you know there's a much easier way to get to the neighbor islands? Try flying on Aloha Airlines and stay at any of these great properties, all for a special low Kamaaina air room and car price of only $99. And best of all, you can travel now and pay later with no interest charges for 90 days. Pleasant definitely makes getting to the neighbor islands easier. So what are you waiting for? Call 922-1515 and go the best. When was the last time you took a really good trip into outer space? If it's been too long, you ought to materialize in Bishop Museum's Space Expo 92. Need a ticket to ride? Drop into any star market and purchase any Pepsi 12-pack, regular or diet, and receive a free child's admission with any paying adult. Did you know that the largest volcano in the world is on a moon of Jupiter? Listen in on a conversation with Space Shuttle Columbia. Test your strength. See if you can lift an actual piece of space. Balance inside a Russian space station. Space, you can never have too much. Sir, need your lawn mowed? Mow your lawn? I'll never be able to afford any Christmas presents. At $4.99, you can't afford to miss Charlie Brown's new Christmas video, only at Shell. Wash your car, sir? Dear Santa, don't think me ungrateful, but skip the practical gifts, like socks and stuff. Try Charlie Brown's all-new Christmas video, only $4.99, only at Shell. Thanks, but I already have three toothbrushes. Comics, the new collector's frontier. Sports cards worth $400 in 1986 now command up to $45,000. Through the Inter-Island Sports Card Network, you'll find investment opportunities with superhero comics that can't be beat. Our professional staff can advise you on trading these valuable assets ahead of the market. The DC comic was Superman died. Can you imagine how this issue will increase in value? Our nationally recognized network uses the most updated research and test market information in the comic industry to give our traders the advantage. Whether trading for fun or as a serious investor, the Inter-Island Sports Card Network works for you. This segment of the news is sponsored by Friendly Isle Travel, with specially low rates on Hawaiian Airlines Inner Island coupons. The money you save is money to play. Call Friendly Isle Travel today. The Campbell's Soup Company today voluntarily recalled hundreds of thousands of frozen dinners and cans of soups because some may contain pieces of glass. The products were distributed to at least 33 states, including Hawaii. The frozen dinners being recalled are Swanson Mexican dinners and Swanson Hungry Man boneless chicken dinners. The soups being recalled are chicken with rice, chicken gumbo, and home cooking chicken with rice soup. The state health department received the notice of the recall this afternoon noon. Several stores have not yet received the word, so don't buy the latest batch of products. And if you do have them at home, don't eat them. You can take them back to the store. And if you're confused about the labels that manufacturers place on food items, new regulations for labels will be enacted in the next year or so. And consumers seem to want to know what's in the food they're buying, but it's not always easy. Dick Allgaier has some examples of misleading labels in the health report. That's right. You know, the magic words seem to be fat-free and healthy. 
But as we see in this report, low fat doesn't really mean low fat. <laughs> I took a trip to the supermarket with nationally recognized nutrition expert, Dr. William Harris. He says the dairy industry began the practice of measuring fat content by weight. Calculator in hand, we computed the real fat content of some of the so-called low-fat items on the supermarket shelves. A prime example, 2% low-fat milk. That's 2% by weight, actually by calories, Low-fat milk is 35% fat. This kind of labeling seemed to work so well for the dairy industry that the meat producers picked it up too. They call this ham a healthy choice. 98% fat-free, they say. But check out the fat content by calorie, and it's really 36% fat. So this is really a fairly high-fat food, even though it says that it's 98% of 98% fat-free. Would, would, by anybody's definition, this be a healthy choice? Doesn't seem to me that it would be. I think you need to get your percent of calories down to about 10%. And anything over 20% is probably too much. And how about this? Light salami. <laughs> the label says it's 33% less fat, but we calculated the real fat content of this item, and it's a whopping 64%. Now here's a demonstration of why it's useless to measure fat content by weight. This glass of water weighs a few ounces. It has no calories and no fat. Now here's a pat of butter that's 100% fat. By the way, did you know that butter's 100% fat? If you put the butter into the water, then you come up with a concoction that you could probably say by weight this is always easier in uh, rehearsal. By weight, this is probably 95 to 98% fat free. The water weighs a lot, the butter doesn't weigh very much, but 100% of the calories in this concoction come from fat. You could say it's 95% fat free, but it gets 100% of its calories from fat. Now tomorrow we're gonna have more on food labeling and I'll show you an easy way to calculate the percentage of fat for yourself. It's really some very simple math, and I'll give you the formula tomorrow. Mm. Darn it, Dick, you mean now I have to give up my nightly glass of water and butter? <laughs> well, yeah, I've had to do that, too. It's a, always a tasty uh, beverage, isn't it? <laughs> and by the way, Dick, don't wipe your hands on your pants. Somebody, somebody give him a napkin. Excellent example, though. Yeah, you sound like my wife. Thank <laughs> Thanks a lot, Dick. There's much more to come on News 4 at 5. Dan Cook joins us next. For the weather report, more high winds are headed our way. And we'll also take a look at some wet and wintry weather in Southern California. And the Hawaii International Film Festival goes island hopping. We'll be right back. The money you save is money to play while enjoying your favorite neighbor island. Friendly Isle Travel gets you Hawaiian Airlines inter-island coupons at specially low rates. Call 533-1368 and take a vacation with Friendly Isle Travel and Hawaiian Airlines. Guys, Christmas. Clothes. Cool. Hot. <laughs> very good with her hands, but with a little practice, who knows what she'll come up with. Give her a gold rope necklace from Ben Bridge. She dabbles in the game, uh, plays a little on weekends. I think she's getting pretty good. Make her holiday sparkle with a diamond ring wrapped in a Benny Bear. The diamond people, Ben Bridge. This is where families hang out. I mean, they got a variety of foods. I like the zip pack. We have a variety of music. Bucket chicken with side oh, on rice. Spaghetti meat sauce. Extra garlic bread. Um, breakfast that they have, the, the pancake. My father used to send me over here and pick up lunch for him. The chili spaghetti. This one right here. King Street, Macaulay. Branch. Oh, That's bank. <laughs> Potato salad, the macaroni salad. The zip pack. That too. Right after surfing. The chicken. We are I like everything. <laughs> <laughs> 
I guess you need these microphone things. Uh, it, helps it helps if you, if you want to be heard. Yeah, okay. okay. I'll put mine on then. <laughs> you know, uh, we have been complaining all weekend about the weather. How about the wind? Mm -hmm. I mean, I have. I don't know. Have you been sure, complaining? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. I've wanted to complain. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if, you ha if you haven't been complaining, Gary, then perhaps a little later this week you'll get the opportunity to complain because it is going to get a little windier. I understand that today. Windier. And windier. Uh, today and tomorrow kind of staying like it is, mm -hmm. but then a very strong high pressure system is moving in and it's going to get even windier on Wednesday. Mm. Just wanted you to look forward to that. Okay, okay thanks, Dan. <laughs> Let's go over here and uh, take a look. You can see uh, some, whoa. Oh my goodness, I, I was all real big there for a second. You can see a smattering of clouds there on the uh, west coast of the uh, island chain. Let's take a closer look and you'll see that uh, this is high clouds primarily, and for the most part, it's staying out there. Let's go to the satellite loop and you can see that, uh, shall we go to the satellite loop? There it is. The satellite loop here to the west, this high stuff pretty much staying there. And this looks like some pretty considerable cloudiness here to the east, but that's actually pretty thin high clouds and is not really gonna be affecting our weather too much. What is affecting our weather is the very strong trade winds that we've been experiencing and they will continue at the moment 15 miles an hour 81 degrees and uh, we have relative humidity outside of 53 percent high today in Honolulu 84 73 uh, overnight and across the state you'll see that our highs were right there in the mid 80s most spots cooler up in Lihui on Kauai only 80 the warmest spot uh, Kahului on Maui they had an 85 tomorrow continued strong trade winds 15 to 25 but as we said by Wednesday probably picking up another notch a lot of sunshine but with the strong trades the windward and Malka areas are probably going to be pretty cloudy. Now, I know if you have been complaining like I have, sometimes it helps to look at somebody else who's got it worse than we do. Take a look now at uh, the Los Angeles area. And in L.A., you can see, uh, well, this isn't actually in downtown Los Angeles. This is in the mountains around L.A., a place called Running Springs. They have had a lot of rain in Los Angeles and in the higher slopes a lot of snow. These are all chain installers, by the way. I don't know if you've ever driven through the mountains of LA, but they have them there standing by to put the chains on so you can get through. Very tough weather in Los Angeles. Why don't we come back here and we'll take a look at the travel map and we'll show you that uh, there is snow in Denver, LA proper is going to be getting better weather. They're looking for partly cloudy skies, some sunshine there, so maybe things will dry out and on the higher elevations, things will thaw out. Uh, some partly cloudy skies in Las Vegas. Rainfall expected up there in Seattle and a lot of sunshine all along the uh, East Coast. Let's look now at our forecast here in Honolulu and vicinity, and it goes like this. Tonight, a few showers, mainly windward and Malka will be in the lower 70s tonight. Trades 15 to 25, and they'll continue right into tomorrow. Again, we're looking for the winds to pick up on Wednesday. Mostly sunny tomorrow is what we'll call it, with a few showers high in the mid 80s. And then as far as the surf, we'll say three to six, down a notch on the north and west, east still up, and that's being created by the trade winds. South shores one to three, small craft advisories are in effect. You see the kites blowing there in the background. Yeah. It's windy. Yeah, and I guess the positive thought about that wind, however, is if it, if it is blowing, then it's blowing the stuff out, right? True, uh, but it all also creates cloudiness on the wind. Blowing it in, yeah. 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 So get some good okay. things and bad things. Yeah. Let's find out what we're getting from Robert. Robert, what are you giving us tonight? We're getting uh, the answer and uh, the pictures to the phone call most often today. Hey, bro, how's the beef on Saturday night? It really is. <laughs> and we'll, we'll get to that a little bit. Uh, first, let's tell you what's coming up in sports at 6. We'll have more surfing, this time from Sunset Beach, day one of the Hard Rock World Cup of Surfing. Also, Bob Wagner reacting to the Rainbow football team basically getting no respect in the national polls, despite having a 10-2 and two record. But right now, we'll show you the, the fight, the bench-clearing brawl that happened Saturday night between the Rainbows and the Pitt Panthers. Here it is. How's the fight? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I was the first one across the field. <laughs> but don't tell Coach Wagner that. Uh, how's the fight? Oh, fun. <laughs> Bye. Hold on, how's that fight? Oh, I don't know. I've got a couple of licks in there, but Wagner's kind of pissed off at us. But we got to show more class than that. You know, we're a 10 and 2 team with the WAC champions. We got to just show more class than that. Hey, how, was, how was that fight over there? Uh, I wasn't in there. You know, we was on the side. <laughs> uh, I got I to gotta ask you, how, how was that fight? Oh, I, don't, I was over there. I was trying to pull people off. You know, I don't, I don't like that kind of stuff all the time. But, uh, you know, you have to protect your, you have to protect your brother and your, your teammates. And, uh, you know, that's pretty much what I was doing. How was that fight? It was me, I was trying to rush him, but the coach didn't grab me back. <laughs> you know, our, our, our cameraman at the football game was on the sideline, the rainbow side. Couldn't even get across to the other side because he got trampled over. Jeez. by The rainbow football team taking off and running to the other side of the field. That's awesome. But, but 
It was pretty good. By the way, that guy can't say that, can he? That, that P, I can't that say that. That P.O. word? Yeah. I can't say that. Uh, a second question, very quickly. 10 and 2, right? 10 and 2. And rank 20... 26, 26 20, if there was a 26. Oh, 26. That's not right, is and it? That, and there's only three teams in the entire country with more wins than Hawaii has. How you figure that? No respect. It's always that way. A name game. So Wagner will explain that later on. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, great. Thanks, Robert. Be right back. How about a steak sandwich or a chicken quesadilla? Good. Just make it fast and then save a bun. We're talking fast lunch, not fast food. Sounds good. Sizzler has great new lunch specials, like the new Bistro Steak Sandwich and the new Santa Fe Chicken Quesadilla. Eats with a tossed salad and endless soft drink. Starting at just $4.99, sounds better than fast food. That sounds good. Make thoughts a part of today. Getting one great picture isn't always so easy. So make sure you have plenty of Kodak film on hand. Bongs makes that part easy. Now all Kodakolor Gold Plus 35mm 3-packs are specially priced with 12 bonus exposures in every pack. Kodak quality, long savings. The rest is up to you. We wish you all the merriest from Bongs. Play Fun in the Sun at Foodland, and you could join the ranks of the almost rich and nearly famous. Match the winning game pieces, and you could win a trip for four to Universal Studios Hollywood. Soar to the stars with E.T., face the fury of King Kong, and feel the heat of Backdraft live. Or live the high life with $25,000 in cash. But you'd better hurry before the dream slips away. Play Fun in the Sun at Foodland today. I'm Al Michaels. Join us tonight for ABC's Monday Night Football. The site, the Astrodome in Houston, Texas. A very big game for the Houston Oilers fighting for their playoff lives. Led by running back Lorenzo White and the great wide receiver Haywood Jeffries. They'll be taking on the Chicago Bears trying to rebound under Mike Ditka. Oilers and Bears tonight on Monday Night Football. We're going to show you how the film festival got underway on the Big Island in just a minute. But first, let's check in with Tina Shelton to see what's coming up later on News 4 at 6. Tina? Thanks, Gary. Pam, a federal sting has broken up what officials say could have been a multi-million dollar counterfeit credit card scam in Hawaii. Cynthia Yip will have details on that story on News 4 in just a half hour from now. We'll have more information on a woman found murdered at Mokolea, buried there over the weekend. And on the quick arrest in Hawaii of a man featured on the TV program America's Most Wanted just Friday night. Also more from the Big Island, which got a new mayor today. Dan Cook and I'll be back with details on News 4 at 6. We hope you'll stay tuned. Thanks, Tina. Well, the Hawaii International Film Festival has left Oahu for the neighbor islands. And the opening ceremonies on the Big Island last night began with a bang outside the Hilo Hawaiian Hotel. <laughs> Quite a night for filmmakers who have come to Hawaii from Japan, China, Korea, Philippines, and Australia, not to mention those from the United States, including Hawaii. Festival films can be seen at nearly two dozen sites this week, and it is the only film festival in the world whose films are free to the public. Kumuhula Ray Fonseca and the Hula Halau O Kahiki Laulani performed at the event that was an excellent beginning to the Neighbor Islands edition of the Hawaii International Film Festival. And it's really terrific that the Neighbor Islands will get a chance to see uh, those international films the way we, be, we in Oahu have been able yeah. to see them. Yeah, it's really been uh, a good festival this year, mm -hmm. some good stuff. Well, thanks very much for inviting us in. World News Tonight is next. And then Dan and Tina will be along with News 4 at 6. Gary and I hope to see you again tomorrow at 5. Bye.